This video is sponsored by Luminar Neo. Let's get started. Out of all the videos I've done covering Luminar AI, this Relight AI feature in Luminar Neo is probably my favorite to date. Look at these photos, for example. I'm able to shift and independently adjust the lighting in the photo using Luminar's 3D depth mapping. Now look at the ground and you could see it move through the image as if you were using focus peaking on your camera. I can adjust the foreground, the midground, and background lighting by just using a couple of sliders. And it's not like it's something that you can just easily replicate by manually masking things out in another program. The way they implemented Relight AI, it's very unique in how it works. Let me show you how I would use it to elevate my photos. This is a backlit image and I feel like a lot of people have to shoot something like this where they don't have an external flash. So you kind of got to balance your exposure. You don't want to make her too dark that you can't recover her from the shadows, but then you also don't want to completely blow out the background because you still want to see the buildings. When adjusting the brightness near slider, notice how it only makes the closest part of the image brighter and does not affect the background of the image at all. When adjusting the background far slider, notice how only the background elements get brighter and darker while not affecting the model's exposure. And then we have the depth slider. As you can see here, look, if I turn it all the way down and you look at the before and after, you know, it's almost like I just shifted the light to her, but not the ground under her. So, I mean, this, she kind of pops out of the scene here, but I think from my eye, for it to look more natural, I'm gonna just only bump it slightly like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I still want the light to hit the ground. I don't. I feel like it doesn't look natural if I'm raising her exposure, but not the ground. When you open up the advanced tab, it gives you an option to de-halo the image. And what that's going to do is help feather the edges to make your image look more natural. You also have the warm near and the warm far. And that's going to let you independently adjust the temperature of the foreground, the midground, and the background. This image of Diana is the perfect example of when you think you're done editing a photo, but then you know you leave, you come back, and then it's like, yo, I could do so much more to this. This is my final photo, but I brought it into Luminar to see what Relight AI can do. And as you can see here, the foreground is pretty bright because there's light reflecting off that door. So if I turn down the brightness here, and now brightness far, I'm shifting the light and making the background brighter, the midground and the, the background brighter, so that she pops out of this image a lot more than she did in the beginning. This photo is not a banger by any means. The lighting's not good here. I'm gonna have to fix this one. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot from a different angle. The, the lighting's not good. The problem here is that the light is illuminating the foreground while her face and the background are in the shade. And using the Relight tool, I'm able to completely flip the lighting here, making the bright foreground dark and the dark background bright just by adjusting a couple sliders. Sometimes you're gonna come across certain areas where there's like a lot of lines, it gets kind of complicated. The masking isn't perfect. And in this case, you can just erase it using this brush. But what I also noticed here is that there is minimal lag when doing this compared to some of the previous versions of Luminar. When we were in Turks and Caicos, Diana and I did a little golden hour shoot on the beach. Now I underexposed her a bit so I didn't completely lose the sky. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do in editing is recover the shadows on Diana. Now adjusting the brightness near slider lifts the exposure of the ground and Diana. Decreasing the brightness far slider is gonna give me a darker, more dramatic background. Now, now you might think to yourself that you can simply brighten the shadows and recover the highlights in another program to get a similar result, but it's really not that simple. Because of the 3D mapping and the depth slider, if I wanted to, I can completely remove the light from the sand while keeping Diana perfectly exposed. But my opinion doesn't look very natural in this photo, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. Oh, and can we just take a moment and appreciate how good the masking has gotten? I'm not getting any kind of halos near her face and body. Relight AI is just one of those tools that can make such a huge impact on your photo without putting in that much work and effort to achieve it. Luminar Neo also has some new features like dust removal AI, line removal AI, layers and mask AI. But the one that I'm waiting for is that background removal AI. I'm what you call a lazy retoucher. That's a fact. And that's exactly why I don't do composites. Part of it actually is because I never learned 
or never wanted to learn that really tedious process. But because I've noticed how much better masking has gotten in Luminar over time, I think that this is gonna be a killer feature. And hopefully I'm one of the first to try that out. I've been personally using Luminar as a plugin and add on to my current workflow. Whenever I feel like I need to add a creative touch to my image, like when I recreated the photo of JLo with Diana and I quickly added that fake iris to Diana's eye to match the JLo photo. I remember that in Luminar AI, I could easily put a fake iris in her eye with a click of a button. And I think that kind of just sealed it right there. That little feature actually came in pretty clutch and just kind of like put the final touches on that photo. I think you should definitely give it a shot. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description box. All right, that is all I have for now. I'm on to the next one.